In the last couple of lessons, we've been talking about flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are supernatural, and about the results that come out of it. And so basically what we're talking about are miracles, how to flow outside of just the natural realm and get into the miraculous, supernatural realm. And one of the things I want to stress today is that miracles glorify God. Miracles bring people to God. Miracles are like a bell that Jesus used constantly to draw people unto Himself. I mean, there's many, many, many scriptures on this. I haven't got time to turn to them all, but I encourage you in your Bible study to start looking in the Word, and you will find many times where Jesus said, the works that I do, the same works testify of who I am. And He even spoke, I believe this was in John chapter 6, he was talking about John the Baptist. He'd been criticized by the scribes and the Pharisees saying, Who are you? Who gave you authority to do this? Who can verify that you are who you say you are? And he's, he talked about John the Baptist, who at the time was the most popular prophet in the nation. And the entire nation had basically embraced John the Baptist as being a godly man. And he used John the Baptist's testimony about himself as a verification of who he was. But then he made this statement, and he says, But I have a greater witness than that of John. The works that I do, the miracles that I perform, they verify and point to who I am. So Jesus talked about the miracles that He performed as being the greatest testimony, witness to who He really was. Look at this passage of Scripture over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. It says in verse 3, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. Notice the scripture here says, God confirmed and bore witness through miracles, signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Here's another passage of scripture that goes right along with this saying the same thing. In Mark chapter 16, it says in verse 19, So after that the Lord had spoken unto them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Miracles, signs, wonders were used to confirm the word. Now if Jesus, who was God, manifest in flesh and was perfect, if He needed His message confirmed in physical, tangible ways, and if the first century disciples needed their message confirmed, then I think it's the height of arrogance for us to think that we can just speak the Word and not see it confirmed by miracles. Miracles are a natural part of the true preaching of the gospel. You know, there's a man named T.L. Osborne who is a very famous minister, and he's ministered overseas and has seen people come to the Lord in the millions, has been very, very effective. But when he first went on the mission field, I'm not sure the exact country, I believe it was India, but he went to a foreign culture like that, and he was over there for six months or a year with virtually no results whatsoever. And he was so disheartened over it, and uh, it was just destroying me. He remembered one time talking to someone and trying to teach them about the things of God. And he pulled out his Bible and began to start quoting Scripture, and the person just stopped him and says, Wait a minute. What makes your little book any better than my book? And he pulled out his Quran, and he says, I've got the Quran. Why should I believe your Bible? And T.L. Osborne didn't know how to convince him. And he actually left the mission field after six months or a year, came back to the United States, and felt like a failure, and he was praying and asking God, and the Lord gave him this key, and he says, you have to see the Word of God confirmed with signs and wonders to get people's attention. And T.L. Osborne began to seek the Lord, felt like God gave him a ministry of healing, went back, and like I said, has seen millions and millions of people converted to Christianity because now he not only preaches the Word, but he demonstrates it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And this exact same thing was done by Jesus. Over here in the second chapter of the book of Acts is an instance where Jesus was at Peter's house, 
And uh, the multitudes, the crowds, all of the scribes and the Pharisees and all of these people, there were so many that they crowded the house and blocked the door. And there was a person who was uh, sick of the palsy. He was paralyzed. And four people were carrying him on a cot. And they came and they couldn't get into the house because there were so many people. So what they did was go up on top of the house and they began to take off the tiles. They broke through the uh, roof and they literally took this man on a cot and led him down in front of all of these people. And when Jesus saw this, here's in Ma uh, Mark chapter 2, and in verse 5 it says, When Jesus saw their faith, He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in His Spirit that they so reasoned within themselves. See, this is one of the gifts of the Spirit, a word of knowledge, like we talked about last time. He said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now, which is the easiest to say? Well, they're both impossible to do. It's impossible for a man to forgive a man's sins. Only God can do that. And it's impossible for a man to speak to the palsy and see him heal. So they're both impossible. But as far as saying, it's actually easier to say, Your sins be forgiven, because there's no physical proof as to whether that happened or not. But when you say to a sick person, you're healed, rise up and walk, well, then it either works or it doesn't work. So as far, his question is, which is hardest to say? Your sins are forgiven or to say, rise up and walk? Well, just from a human standpoint, it's harder to say, rise up and walk, because immediately we're going to see whether that word came to pass. So what Jesus did, he did the harder of the two things to say, proving that if you can do the greater, then you can do the less. If you could jump 10 feet, you can certainly jump one foot. But if you can't do that which is least, you can't do that which is greatest. If you can do that which is greatest, then you could certainly do that which is least. So what he did was heal the man to show them that he had power to forgive sins. So this is what he said in verse 9. Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Jesus said very clearly that the reason he did this miracle was so that they would know that he had power to forgive sins. One of the reasons that more people haven't turned to the Lord today is because there's not enough people demonstrating his power and using it to prove that if God can heal bodies and do these things, then He can also forgive sins. You know, I heard a testimony by a man on a tape today who came to me. It's a very long story, but he had a bullet in his back that was pressing against his spine. And this bullet was where you, could, you couldn't see the bullet, but you could see the bump on the skin. It was right up against his spine. There was terrible pain, and he was unable to walk and get around properly. And he showed this to me before the service. After the service, I called him forward, prayed with him, and this bullet moved about three-fourths of an inch. He now has MRIs and uh, x-rays to prove it. But his statement on this tape was that when that bullet moved three-fourths of an inch, he said while everybody else went to sleep that night, he laid there and thought, a God who can move that bullet that men could not move because it was right against the spine. It could have paralyzed him so they couldn't operate on it. He says if a God could move that bullet, then he needed to learn more about that God. And that's what caused that man to start seeking the Lord. And that's the reason that God does miracles today. Miracles glorify God. It says it this way, Matthew chapter 9, verse 8, But when the multitude saw it, talking about this miracle of the man who was let down through the roof and the way that he was healed and got up and walked, it says, When the multitude saw it, they marveled, and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Some people will tell you that miracles are of the devil, but it's not true. Miracles glorify God. They draw people to God. If miracles were of the devil, then it seems like that in the bars and strip joints, you'd be seeing people get healed and blind eyes open and deaf ears open. 
BECAUSE IF IT WAS OF THE DEVIL, THEN THAT THAT WOULD BE A GOOD PLACE FOR IT TO TAKE PLACE. BUT MIRACLES ARE NOT OF THE DEVIL. THEY ARE OF GOD. THEY BRING GLORY TO GOD. AND IF YOU ARE GOING TO ACCURATELY REPRESENT GOD, YOU NEED TO TRUST HIM FOR MIRACLES. YOU NEED TO EXPECT IT. YOU NEED TO TELL PEOPLE TO ANTICIPATE MIRACLES. AND IF YOU'LL BUILD AN ATMOSPHERE, CREATE AN ATMOSPHERE FOR MIRACLES, THEY WILL HAPPEN. AND YOU'LL SEE THAT MIRACLES WILL BE LIKE A BELL THAT WILL DRAW PEOPLE'S ATTENTION TO THE LORD. IT'S THE WORD THAT'S GOING TO CHANGE THEM. PEOPLE ARE BORN AGAIN BY THE WORD OF GOD, IS WHAT IT SAYS IN 1 PETER 1, 23. IT'S THE WORD THAT CHANGES THEM, BUT MIRACLES WILL GET THEIR ATTENTION. AND IF YOU'RE TRULY PREACHING THE WORD, MARK CHAPTER 16 SAYS GOD WILL CONFIRM THE WORD THAT HE PREACHES, THE TRUE WORD, WITH SIGNS AND WONDERS FOLLOWING.